In my travels, in my business, I get to meet some very interesting people and Yvonne Spangler is no exception. I sat down with her in this episode of Wealth Protector TV to have a discussion about what she's focused on. In addition to running her law practice, she also is the founder of a nonprofit to help abused women. Such an incredible person Yvonne is with an incredible passion. So join me as I dive into what Yvonne has going on. Hi, everybody. Thanks for jumping on to Wealth Protector TV. Really excited to have our guest here today, Yvonne Spangler, who is doing a lot. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you, Paul, very much. Yeah, and Yvonne is an attorney. And uh, Yvonne, I say this right, you're doing uh, a focus on appeals, business law, estate law. Did I get that right? That's correct, yes. Excellent. Well, uh, from those who watch this show, they, they love meeting other people and hearing stories about how you got started, what your business is all about, and uh, any sort of challenges you faced or opportunities along the way. And I know you're doing some really interesting work outside of your firm, too, with abused women. I'd love to hear about that. But let's, let's get started. I mean, tell us about your background, Yvonne. So I was a trial attorney for... 20 plus years of my career. I'm now in my 23rd year going on 24. And I stopped counting the number of trials that I did after I reached 50, which was many years ago. So I was a transactional litigation and appellate attorney. My office is now closed on Fridays. You cannot really have a litigation practice when your office is closed on Friday. So I work Monday through Thursday now. And Fridays and you're at the focus lake. On Yes, then we're at the lake um, and doing other, uh, you know, nonprofit and charity work as well on the weekends. And so when you go from a, you know, transactional litigation and appellate practice, what that does is really makes us better transactional attorneys when we're drafting business documents, for example, and estate planning documents, as well as the appellate piece of it made us better litigation and then also transactional attorneys too because we see how the contracts and the estate planning documents work so to speak in the real world right yeah and you said in your bio that you love the appeals work because it's detailed and there's a lot of nuance to it is that right absolutely right and the other great thing about appellate work is that the facts don't change so when you're in litigation and going through a trial, the facts change constantly, especially like in a family law situation, the facts change more often than they do for, than in a business litigation standpoint. But the great thing about the appeal is that the record is set. You know what the facts are, you know what's in the record. And so you're really applying the law to the facts under that scenario. To me, it's really more pure intellectual work is how I refer to it. Um, and there isn't the emotional aspect of when facts continue to change throughout the course of the case. And then you have to adjust your strategy and your plans accordingly. Right. Well, I'm always interested in how people grow their businesses too. And uh, where did you start growing your practice? And how did you grow your practice? I mean, is it a referral based practice? I mean, that you know, how did you really get entrenched in the community and, and, and grow things out? It really is primarily a referral based practice. I'm somebody that does much better personally as an introvert, one on one with somebody or in a very small setting uh, where I can really talk about the services and the skill set that I have. And so when you're talking about referral based practice, when I opened up my law firm many, many years ago, what I did was send out to every single person I've ever met, you know, an announcement. Right. And the day that we opened officially, I had my first business client and oh. it hasn't slowed down since then. Where was that? What town was that in? St. Paul. Oh, St. Paul. Okay. And you opened your doors. Was it just you? Did you have uh, anybody else? No, in the uh, first law firm that I had, there was three of us. So there was three partners. Uh, and so, yeah, the very first day that we officially opened, had a first business client. 
Wow. And uh, from there, it was just, you know, kind of bing, 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 one by one and building up your client base over time? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of our best referral resources is actually from clients that we currently have and those that we've had in the past. They come back for additional work and then they also refer their friends and families and colleagues to us as well. Oh, great. And then from there, opening your doors, Yvonne, then I know you have a, a partner, I think one partner now, right? So how did, how did you get to where you are now? What was that evolution like? Well, the partners have changed throughout the course of the year as people's lives have changed as well. And so every single time that there was a change in the partner, we would close down the old firm and then start up a new one for purposes of limiting liability. And so it was just, uh, you know, people who came into my life at certain periods of time were hugely inf influential in who the partners were that I've associated with. And my current partner, Perry Stefano, I was introduced to him actually through a my former partner. Oh. They knew each other going years back. Okay. When a former partner recommends, you know, the person he used to work with, that's a good sign, right? There was no bad breakup there. Correct. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> they have been colleagues at a, a different organization as lawyers, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, as you were growing the business, uh, did you have, I mean, were there challenges along the way uh, that you had to deal with and what were they, if any? Absolutely. There are challenges. I mean, depending on where I am uh, during the practice sort of defines what the challenges are. I mean, one of the huge challenges, you know, that we had is something that I think a lot of people probably can relate to. And that was a building uh, that we were renting that had constant water issues. Oh, and wow. so that creates a lot of issues, not only with respect to our own health, but those of our employees as well. Um, and those of our clients that we also had to manage. And so based on that experience, the office that we're in right now, we purchased because oh. we wanted to have control over if there are issues. I mean, I want them addressed and I want them addressed correctly. Yeah. I don't want um, a halfway resolution to something, especially when it deals with people's health and well-being. Well, what would mean there was water leaks in the building that you were dealing with? Yeah, there was lots of water leaks in the building, um, and it turns out that that creates, um, which I'm sure a lot of people know, mold issues. And mold issues are very detrimental to health and safety of humans. Oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of lawsuits and litigation around mold from renters to landlords. And so uh, it's interesting you mentioned purchasing your building because before we started shooting and recording, I asked you about that painting in the background. And you say, yeah, you know, describe the building you're in. I'll let you do it because it seems so interesting. We're in a Queen Anne Victorian uh, that was built in 1888. So the painting that's behind me, I mean, the wallpaper is um, from England. Um, the painting that's behind me is from a scene that could have happened in real life, you know, when the building was built. So <laughs> we are in a very fancy Queen Anne Victorian um, that has a lot of character, stained glass, you know, woodwork. It's really detailed. It's really beautiful. It's a fantastic place to work. Oh, lovely. Sounds lovely. Um, and then I wanted to ask you, because you said you're a one-on-one -on -one person, uh, and you're, you're in the business of law, of course. Doesn't there have to be a human element, even in the business of law, where you're connecting with people on a personal level? You know, uh, it, you know, it seems like that comes up in a lot of other industries a lot, you know, that are maybe, you know, viewed as more creative and one-on-one, and -on -one. but in law, you know, there's sort of this perception that it's stiff, but it seems like you, you realize that there's a, there's a personal element to it. Is that, how would you comment on that? I think that there absolutely is a personal element, and I believe that the personal element is actually more intimental, I should say intimate and actually more crucial than a lot of different industries because we're dealing with people's lives. I mean, the issues that they are facing from a legal standpoint, some point there are literally life and death issues. Other times they're issues that have a long-term impact that's gonna affect 
the individual and his or her family for years to come. So it's absolutely important that we focus on keeping the humanity of it in mind as we are advising our clients as well. Yeah, it's interesting because just this morning, uh, I, I got a call. Obviously, I, I'm associated with a law firm too, doing some work there, but a woman who's the executor of an estate, someone's on their deathbed dying tomorrow. And she's like, I just want to make sure I'm doing everything right. It's my friend. I have a power of attorney. So, I mean, in those cases, my gosh, it doesn't get any more intimate than that. You know, and you could hear the, the grief in her voice. Correct. And that's why there are certain individuals who are in an industry who don't understand that human connection. Um, but that's something that we're very well aware of. And we feel privileged to be able to help people out in all walks of their life, including those moments that are the most difficult and the most excruciating for them. Yeah. Who are there other people that work with you that are, that are essential to the team? Like as you're running the business, obviously you're front and center. Do, are there assistants and paralegals and they, they serve an important role? There isn't. When we moved into this building, uh, I want to say it was about nine years ago now, uh, we no longer have any support staff because of zoning. And it actually was a great fit for the employees that we had at that time. And then also the way that we wanted to practice law. I mean, when you contact us, you get us. Oh, that's You're not great. talking to an assistant or a paralegal who then contacts you know, chats with us about it and then they get back to the client and then that just, the client has six more questions as a result of the attorney's advice, you know, the entire time usually which they're being billed for each individual's time when they consult right. with the firm. So with us, it's, you know, who you see is who you get. Yeah. So you really are one-on-one -on -one with the folks you're dealing with. What sort of cases come up? I mean, is there a, a common thread of scenarios you deal with or is it just all over the map? There's a wide variety of issues all over the map from, you know, buy-sell agreements, for example, to commercial leases, to employment issues. I mean, employment issues are, have been more prevalent, I would say, in the last year or so because of the pandemic and how that is impacting employees and businesses as well. Um, but it really is all over the map with respect to issues. And are there a lot of kind of, uh, you know, the, the uh, winds of change are howling right now when it comes to estate planning and all that stuff? I mean, I would imagine you have your thumb on the pulse of that and needing to really communicate with clients about sort of what's being debated in Washington and coming through the pike potentially. Well, the winds of change in law are always there. Um, because a court can issue a decision which completely, as of you know today, changes the entire landscape of how we practice and how we've advised client, clients and what is in a client's best interest. So in the law, the winds of change are, are constant. They don't die down, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, good, good point. Uh, so you've got to be, you've got to be, you know, on it tw all the time. I mean, there is no break for you. You've really got to, you know, understand what's going on. Right, which is why it's important that for each client that, you know, that we service, that we're making sure that we have up-to-date research for that particular issue. Because again, you know, what was true yesterday with respect to the law may not be true today because of a court decision that was passed. Yeah. Or maybe the legislature, you know, changed a lot at this time, you know, you know, we all know when the legislature is in session and not in session, but still it can definitely change. I mean, they've been in session multiple times now here in Minnesota because of the pandemic. Right. And, and Yvonne, when you're, uh, I consider you an entrepreneur, you're running your own business, you've been successful for quite a few years. And what would you say are the sort of the personality traits that, that anybody would need to have in order to run their own business and be an entrepreneur? I'm always fascinated by that because it's not for everybody. And I would say most, and, and I, someone told me yesterday, most entrepreneurs it's not for them either. You know, they're not cut out for it. So how have you been able to do it? What are some of the, you know, tools that you have? For myself personally, yeah. um, I am somebody that most things don't get to me. 
You mean emo- I, emotionally, you don't get into yeah, yeah. Yeah. If something happens, it's like, okay, it is what it is. Like, here's a problem. What's the solution? Right. You know, right. I don't generally, you know, dwell on it, get overly excited about it, start crying about it. That's just not my personality. <laughs> I'm not a super emotional person as most people who know me can attest to. I'm about to cry just hearing that. I'm so emotional. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you're looking for solutions right away to problems, which is, so when things get crazy or there's really stressful things, it sounds like you kind of just stay focused and, and that's a great personality trait to have for anyone who's running a business. Right. You really need to focus on solving the problem. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't days when I'm like, you know, why, um, sort of thing or why me or, um, but it doesn't happen very often. I mean, as a, business owner, there are always challenges. There are always things that come up, you know, and when I was doing primarily litigation, I mean, there was things happening on a daily basis that you had to figure out and respond to. And so part of that is just remaining calm and focusing on solving a problem rather than having it consume you. Yeah. uh, Very good point. What about the idea of working in your business? versus working on your business. Obviously, you got to do the work. You're the expert. Do you carve out time and are you organized about looking at your business, working on it, iterating where needed? How do you balance that? At certain points, um, depending on what my schedule has been, I've had to carve out time specifically to be working on it versus in it. Um, but for the most part, it's just being mindful always that you always have to have that pipeline filled. Mm-hmm. So if all you're doing is working on client cases and you're not working on bringing new cases in, then all of a sudden one day you're like, okay, well, I don't have any work. Luckily right. that hasn't happened. Yeah. Um, and so I'm doing something right with working yeah. on the business versus working in it. Yeah, you've got a pipeline that's pretty, pretty consistent. Correct. What are you looking most forward to in the future? Uh, I know you and I have talked offline and it's interesting what your kind of your next 10 years looks like, but where, you know, are you, are you focused on something for the future that, that it is important to you besides, you know, retirement at some point? Like, what do you, what do you look at? Yeah, I'm really focused on the nonprofit law firm that I co-founded six years ago now. I mean, it's been an idea that I have had for about 20 years before that. So the organization is Domestic Abuse Legal Advocacy Center, PSC. We're a 501c3 nonprofit law firm that provides pro bono legal services to victims and survivors of domestic violence at shelters that our organization collaborates with here in Minnesota. So that is where I devote my, almost exclusively my pro bono time working on client cases. And then that's also where I um, put a large bulk of my charitable contributions. I mean, I have several organizations that I provide charitable contributions to on a yearly basis. But DALEC, as we call it for short, which is the initials of the organization, is where I focus my pro bono time, energy, commitments, both financial and otherwise. And so we have approximately 45 volunteer attorneys that provide services to the residents of the two shelters that we collaborate with. And then I'm the board chair of the organization. Um, And my title is really president. Like I'm the one who runs the organization. And right now we're all volunteer organization at this time. What a wonderful cause and passion there. Yeah. And that uh, those the shelters are in your area there. Correct. We have a collaboration with an urban and suburban shelter here in the Twin Cities. We also had a collaboration um, initially with a rural shelter. But when that shelter closed, we did not um, add another shelter back uh, to the lineup, so to speak, because there's so much need and so much work that needs to be done. Just focusing on the two shelters that we have here in St. Paul and then also in the suburbs. 
That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Well, Yvonne, I could talk forever. I mean, I, I, I get so interested in, in people and businesses. I want to thank you for coming on and uh, uh, really appreciate it. I want to thank everybody who's listening for being here. And yeah, I know you and I will continue our discussion going forward as we, uh, as we get to know each other more and more. So thank you, Yvonne. Thank you very much, Paul, for having me. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome.